Hey game developers, Bilal from Zenfinity.net and welcome to another Unity tutorial. And in this one, we're going to learn how to use Mechanim to animate a character's movement, death, and attacks. Now just download the starter files up here in the top right, or download them from the description below. And let's animate a character right now. Alright, so by the end of this video, you should know what a mechanism state is, and you should know how to transition between these states. Finally, you should be able to create a mechanism state machine for animation. That's everything that we are going to be covering in the video. The video in front of you is what we're going to be creating. So we have four buttons here that we can click to animate our character in a certain way, and we're just going to be creating a simple script that will drive all this functionality. Let's get started. Okay, if you haven't already, go ahead and download the project starter files, and open a new project and import the Unity package that you receive when you click on that link in the description below. All right, so once you get into the scene here, make sure that you, well actually into the project, make sure that you open the main scene here and you'll be able to see the same sort of thing that's on my screen right now where a character is standing and we see four buttons that should animate the character. Now right now our scene does nothing. If we hit play, we can see our player doing nothing and none of these buttons will actually have any functionality. But what we're going to do is, of course, make sure that each of these play their respective animation. All right, so to do so, the first thing that we need to do is go ahead and click on our player prefab here. And actually, instead of our prefab, we can click on the player that's right in the scene here. And we see that he has an animator component, but he doesn't have any animator controller. And the animator controller is really where the core of Mechanim is found. So let's go ahead and create a new animator in here. And we'll call this the character animator. Okay. And so let's click on the character in the scene again. Sorry. And drag this over here. Now, we'll go ahead and see what this looks like by double clicking. And all there is is an exit in our mechanism states here. So before we go ahead and edit these mechanism states, we want to grab some animations. Now in our scene we have a blender model here that's set up with four animations. We can go ahead and click on the cast one and then hold shift and left click on run to select all of these and then drag them into our mechanism state machine. And looks like our entry is over here. So I'll go ahead and drag these farther over. Okay and so what I want to do is, first off, make sure that we can actually translate, or uh, sorry, go into any of these animations here, uh, transition into any animations here, and then we want to actually enter into the idle state here. So I'll go ahead and click on, click on our entry state here, and I'll hit set state machine default state, and click on our idle state afterward. Okay, perfect. Now, let's go ahead and create some Boolean parameters here so that we can actually determine which state we want to go into. So let's drag our idle here and I'm going to position all of these around our any state transition here because what's going to happen is we'll have transitions from any state into each of these and that way we can just transition from any state uh, by setting some booleans to true. Okay so let's go into parameters and let's hit the plus and hit boolean. Now let's name this first one idle. And you can probably guess where we're going with the rest of these. So let's make this one attack. And then we'll do run. Oh, sorry, this should actually be called move. Move. And our last one is going to be die. Okay, so I'll rename this to attack. And I'll rename this one to move. Okay. Now let's go ahead and create our transitions. This is really the core of what drives the logic behind our mechanism states here. So let's right click on any state and hit make transition. And we'll start with going to idle. Now from any state to idle, we want to have the one transition. Oh, we want to have the condition over here by clicking on this arrow. We hit this plus here and then we have idle and it has to be set to true to go from any state into idle and that's how the flow of mechanism really works. So there's one more thing that we want to make sure happens and that's that we can't transition to ourself as we don't want to keep playing the same transition over and over again. We want to transition from any state that isn't idle into idle. So let's go ahead and uncheck this and we're going to be doing that for the rest of these states too. So let's right click onto any state again, hit make transition 
and then go to attack and let's change this off and go ahead and add the condition where attack must be true and we'll go ahead and do this for the rest of these so with die turn off can transition to self add the die condition to true and the same for move okay perfect so make sure to set that can transition to self off I'm going to check that all of these are correct. Die goes to die, move goes to move, idle goes to idle, and attack goes to attack. And all of these cannot transition to themselves. Perfect. Okay, so the method that we're using here is that only one Boolean needs to be true to make one of these work. Now, you might be wondering, you know, what if we have two of these Booleans activated? And that's something that we're going to manage in code. Basically, whenever we animate something, we're going to want to set all of our other animations off in this simple um, situation. In some situations, you may want to run multiple animations at the same time, in which case you would choose presets for which animations to activate. Okay, so for this example, let's go ahead and go back to our scene here. And let's look at our character. And I'll go out of 2D here. And I'll actually just go ahead and see if we can play this. And it looks like our character did go straight into the idle state here. So why don't we go ahead and click on our animator again and see what's happening. So idle, you'll notice, is actually looping. And that's because if we go ahead and double click on this idle animation here, we can see that loop time is activated here. And that's something that's been preset in Blender. Now that's the same with running, but with dying and casting, or dying and attacking, we actually have this loop time off because we only want to cast or we only want them to fire once. Okay, so let's go ahead and set attack to true. And I'll go ahead and drag the animator off to the side here for a bit. So if we set attack to true, then we notice that that goes through and our player goes into attack. So I'll then set move to true. I'll turn off attack. I'll turn off move and hit attack again. And then I'll hit die. And then we'll go back to idling. So our state machine is working by logic, but how can we make a script that will do all of this once we hit each of these buttons? And so that's what we're going to be doing next. So why don't we go over here into the project view and click on their scripts folder here. And let's create a new C -sharp script called player animation controller. Okay, let's go ahead and open up this script in Visual Studio. And I'll just, uh, I'll just delete these defaults I have here. And the first thing I'll do is create a region, which is just a method of organizing our code, called attributes. And I'll have an end region here. All right, so the first attribute I want to have is the animator itself, which refers to that mechanism controller. So I'll write private animator, animator. And this is just a reference to that. And now we want four string constants that are going to refer to each of our animation parameter names. So we're going to use those to fire our animations from the script. So we'll start with private const string idle animation bool. And this is going to be equal to idle as a string. Now, if you don't know what a constant is, basically in C sharp, it is something that cannot be changed after compile time, so it must be something that we can set right here and can never change. Okay, so let's go ahead and copy this and paste it four times. So this next one will be death animation boolean, this, uh, this one will be attack animation boolean, and then this one will be move animation boolean. Okay, and let's set the strings appropriately. Die, attack, and move. Perfect. So moving on, let's go ahead and create a start function here that will set the reference to our animator. So private void start. And in here we'll write animator is equal to get component animator. Okay, perfect. So now we have a reference to our animator so we can write some functions that will actually use this animator. To begin with, let's write a function that will disable all animations that are not one that we pass through as, a, as an argument. That way, whenever we want to animate either moving, attacking, death, or idling, 
we can make sure that all the other ones are disabled so we don't get any wonky behavior. So let's start with private void disable other animations. And this will take an animator and an animation parameter. And like we said, we'll just go through every parameter in the animator and disable all of them. So let's go for each animator controller parameter parameter in animator dot parameters, which is all those things that we saw in Mechanim. If you want a quick visual of it, we can go ahead and click on the animator here. That's just all of these four parameters. That's basically uh, just an array of them. Okay, so let's in our for each loop here, make sure that if the parameter name is not equal to the thing that we're trying to animate, animation, well then we want to do animator.setBool, oh, set bool, parameter.name, and false. Perfect. Okay, so this way we'll disable everything that we're not trying to animate. Now, let's go ahead and create our animate function, which will allow us to animate that one animation exclusively. So let's type private void animate string bool name. And in here, we'll first call disable other animations with our animator and with our bool name, which will, of course, disable all the animations that are not the one that we're passing. And now we'll write animator.setBool, which is how we animate something, bool name, and true. So for example, if we passed die into animate, it would then disable attack, move, and idle in disable other animations. And then it would set die to true here, which would make our character fall over. Okay, so now that we have animate all set up, let's go ahead and create another region for all of our animation functions. In this region, we'll have a function for idling, dying, attacking, and moving. So let's go ahead and start writing them. Private or public void animate idle. Hit enter here. Uh, and it'll call animate with the idle animation boolean. Now let's go ahead and copy paste this four times, three times, sorry, uh, so that we can do this for, of course, all of our animations. So we'll start with die, death animation boolean. And we'll go to attack, attack, animation bool. And then finally we have move. Perfect. So now we can use these functions and call them from anywhere. In this example, we'll be using those UI buttons. And that will make our character uh, perform any of these actions. So now we can actually just hop back into Unity as we're all done scripting this. And I mean, it's uh, this is all you have to do to fire our animations. So I'm going to click on Unity here. And I'll go ahead and in this scene hierarchy view, uh, I'll click on this first button here. And let's make sure that they're in the right order. So that is the idle button here. And I'll hit this plus on, in this on clicked, uh, on click dialog box here. And I'll drag our character and before I continue here, I'll actually click on our character as I forgot to add this component on here. So make sure that we put this component on our character, our player animation controller script, which we just wrote. And now, now that our character is dragged into this on click function here, uh, let's go ahead and move down to player animation controller. And then we'll hit animate idle. And so we're going to follow through that same process for all of these other four here. So I'll drag character into here. I'll click on the no function dialog box here. And under an player animation controller, we'll hit uh, animate die. Uh, and then let's do that for attack as well. Drag our character, animate attack. And with move, we will drag the character and we will hit player animation controller with animate move. Okay, so now our character actually should just do whatever we tell him to here. So I'll hit play and we saw it went and entered into idle. Let's go ahead and drag the animator here so we can see our parameters change. So we can see idle looping here. Let's click die. 
and we see our character die once, and notice it is not looping as we said earlier because loop time is disabled through Blender. So now let's hit attack, he should get up and do it, perform an attack. And if we hit move, it should start looping our movement. And it looks like all this is working perfectly, so I, that's all you have to do to uh, set up a character state machine in Mechanim. Uh, now that is actually going to be it for this video. And if it helped you out, make sure to hit that like button and hit subscribe if you want more tutorials on learning how to use Unity. Now with all that said, if you want to accelerate your growth, go ahead and click on the card that's popping up at the top right right now. And it's a free ebook on all the tools that you need to make your first game. Now, if you want to take the next step and really accelerate how fast you learn Unity, we actually have a crash course on how to create your first game. If you click on the card in the top right, it will actually pop up a sample video. It's actually a free lesson from that course. Uh, and it's how to create a spaceship controller so you can know if that course is something you'd be interested in. With all that said, I will see you guys in the next video and have a good day.